uh, I'm sure you'll be happy that what all the schools and the new education policy uh, they are getting into with all these uh, foundation classes and uh, to quite an extent ma'am the present day schools at least in the urban areas I would say I don't talk much about the rural areas but uh, the schools which are the renowned ones and who have the potential of providing their children with lots of facilities and time and everything there I can assure you that they have a lot of free play they have structured play a uh, lot many activities uh, are provided to the children of uh, learning by doing uh, keeping in mind the uh, multiple intelligence and the skill development of the children uh, very soon very lately we've also got the integrated curriculum that also has brought in a lot many things you know where with one little thing we can associate a number of uh, subjects not it's not just play but yeah definitely it's play with the curriculum that is coming into so it was a wonderful uh, explanation by you ma'am what exactly is play and how one should go about it the how we need to change our mindset towards it towards the little toddlers so ma'am the first question that goes to you is how can play prove effective as a means of discovering one's identity um uh, I'm, since i'm not aware of the context from which this question has come i'll just respond to what i the way i have understood it i think um we need to discover our identity we need to discover something when we have lost it so if you have lost our identity that's when the question of discovering it comes so just to give an example if if a boy wants to wear pink pants to school when they have a free day and they have no uniform day he is not going to wear pink pants and go to school because he is going to be scared of being made fun of or being bullied or being called a sissy or being called names but uh, if a child at sahaj wants to wear pink pants and come to sahaj he is free to do that so the ident uh, when we are accepting all the emotions all the feelings our children are able to when they are able to distinguish between whether they whether they are upset or whether they are sad or whether they are angry they are aware of who what their likes are when they, are, they have a right to protest and right to say that i don't like it i'm not comfortable with this uh, they know who they are as people they are self aware they know their own identity so that uh, the identity is being not uh, discovered through play but the identity is being uh, uh, safeguarded through play this is what i would like to say that uh, play true play i'm not talking about any other play i'm talking about true play i uh, and i'm a play purist so for me uh, i i put a lot of emphasis on what true play means and when there is an environment of true play uh, that's when the identity is protected of children and that's how the children themselves discover who they are as people uh yeah that means we could also believe it in the other manner that uh, children have a strong sense of identity right from the beginning they have a strong sense of identity and well being yeah. so it's only how it is discovered in its varied form as they are growing the changing form the change that comes in probably that is what they keep discovering yes the second question ma'am how do the children from sahaj find conventional schools when they join them after they grow out of sahaj uh well on a micro level uh, my own daughter redita she is uh, now 5 but when she was 4 and a half she decided to uh, go and explore a conventional school and she i observed her from a distance on one day and i think she was a most focused child amongst all the other peers of hers in that classroom closed classroom environment uh because she went her to that space by her own choice uh and uh, but on a macro level uh, uh i we never had a, we have just opened up in 2019 and we are a very small community space i'm waiting for a day to come when our children go to a conventional school because that's the day when those teachers and those school principals and school owners are going to come to us and tell us what have you done to this children you know <laughs> because uh, uh simply put play gives us an opportunity to function to develop the executive functions uh the ability to uh, listen to the instructions and follow instructions is an executive function and that happens through play 
that's a scientific process that's a neurological process that happens through play and uh, it's only when they undergo this stage and then when they go to a conventional school they're going to be ready for it uh, we have proof uh, in germany in finland in other european countries where children shift from a play based kindergarten to a more uh, of course their mainstream is our alternative in india but keeping that aside they shift to a slightly more instruction based curriculum we have proof in from america where tiny pockets of pure true play based schools are mushrooming and those children uh, since the past decade are adjusting to a conventional school beautifully because what do we need for you know for the first year maybe our children might not be able to write in sentences which in in, in two languages in in india it's like hindi and english in north india and which is i mean anyways so uh, uh, our, what do we need before we learn how to write we need perseverance we need physical mus core muscle development not only fine motor skills we need a core muscular development to happen before we write uh, we need uh, to be exposed to books and stories and the need to write so by the time they are 6 or 7 now they know why do we need to read and write because we need to make a grocery list because we need to write a letter because we need to write a card so now there is a, a inquisitiveness on how to read and write so what they will cope up within one year and we have research by german government like i mentioned 1970s which tell us that we will cope up in one year because they've got a strong foundation they've got a strong formative year so i'm really waiting for children to come to sahaj and then they'll shift to a conventional school because that's when i know that real change will come about in udaipur so yeah oh. we wish you all good luck for that ma'am <laughs> thank you <laughs> What is your idea of child-led play, and how much of this can be achieved with the Indian parents, ma'am? Because uh, till now, uh, the examples which have been setting in uh, about the research and all, mainly it is coming from either Germany or from US. So, what do you talk about it? Like how it could be done with the Indian parents? How would they accept it? I think for uh, first and foremost what we need is we need our school principals and our school educationists to come with the conviction of guarding the children's childhood that's the firm, foremost that conviction that I am and going to guard this child's childhood the children who will come to my school and once the educationist is convinced about the power of play the uh, the research the neurological benefits the all the benefits that play is giving to them and we have all the research even if it's coming from germany or it's coming from america wherever it's coming from children are children then uh, no children play differently children play and children are children and i am looking forward for an indian academician to perhaps do a research on play i'm really looking forward for that to happen but uh, we have the research and we cannot uh, uh, cannot set aside that research and do something else what the parents want us to do we need to tell the parents and we need to convince them it is difficult i've done that and i'm telling it's extremely difficult i've i've gone through a lot of emotional stress doing it but i will still say that i will still guard the child's rights because i'm convinced about what i'm doing is the right thing to do so um there is there can be a process there can be a three tier uh uh, uh you know what can i say a uh, process where we explain that okay this is why we are doing it okay the first level they will be convinced then they will be okay but you know that child can perhaps do this oh my child cannot do that so there has to be a continuous process with parents every month every week we need to invite them and keep that process going and keep documenting and keep doing the research and keep the, and at the at the end of the fourth grade show them the research that this is this is a play kindergartner's graduate and this is an instruction academic based graduate look at the difference what do you want do you want this or do you want this and in the next 5 years the next generation of parents will now be ready because this is the parents these are the parents who are going to go and convince our other parents so it's the first set of parents which are going to be difficult because like i mentioned in the presentation india is a culture we are not accepting play a true play as an instrument of learning and once we do that the job is easier for us to convince the parents and uh, the first set is difficult the rest is going to be a ripple effect in the in the world ma'am the next question suggest some ideas for introverted introvert students to make them mingle and play in groups 
Okay. Because when you have a big class, when you have more number of students, there are definitely some introverts. So how do we mingle them up? Uh, I think uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, because we uh, stress on giving, uh, offering our children a non-judgmental space, uh, a safe space. Uh, I would, uh, I would accept uh, whatever the child is doing. So once I had a child, a four and a half year old child, uh, their parents decided to uh, pull her out from a conventional school. She was at Sahaj for three months, uh, and then something happened, and she kind of. went somewhere else but she was with us for 3 months and when she had come to us her parents had told us that she is an introverted child and uh, the school the mainstream school is not able to take care of her that's why we are pulling her out and sending her to sahaj and i listened to the parents and said okay let's see uh, that particular child she was a girl child and she would come to sahaj and play in the sand area she would dig out the sand dig out the sand dig out the sand and she kept doing it for 2 hours straight for like 20 days and i told her mother that i think she's just healing herself through her sand play let's see how things go from this day onwards one day she uh, she took some chalk and on a cement surface she started writing a few alphabets and then she was drawing a x next to all the alphabets that she was drawing so i i asked her you oh there's a there's b there's x I said, no, this is not X. This is wrong. This is wrong, and this is the effect of um, uh, that school that had on her. And then she started dancing around that area, and she started singing "Let It Go, Let It Go" from the movie Frozen that she had seen. And I was like, I hope you let it go, my child. And she did let it go in that moment because after thirty days of she joining us, I saw uh, her smiling for the very first time. And after forty-five days of her joining Sahaj, I saw her playing with the other children. And then I told her parents, "Do you think she's introvert, or she was just finding her own voice?" And they said she was just finding her own voice. So many times, uh, it's it, you know uh, we kind of label children, and some children are genuinely introverted, uh, but some children are not. It's just about. Uh, you know accepting whatever they're doing having no expectations not having an expectation to make them do anything just accept just ex- it's it's about acceptance in all with all our heart mind body and soul um and that's that's powerful it's 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 intangible but it is an intangible power that we have Ma'am, the next question: How do we accept the diversity and heterogeneity in learning and behavior? Um, I I think when we uh, set up an environment, before we set up an environment, we send out a questionnaire or uh, to the parents, uh, where we understand what do children do at home, what kind of play do they uh, do, uh, what kind of books are they reading, if they're reading any books at home, um, what are their favorite characters at the moment. um you know so we get a good understanding of the schemas that children are in for instance that we had a child who was you know, playing with a lot of lego so we made sure that we have wooden blocks we have planks we have tires we have bricks in the uh, environment you know so uh, and then we have a we nurture a very meaningful relationship with each child uh so it is uh, and when we nurture a meaningful relationship we understand each child's lo- uh uh behavior and learning and temperaments and then we don't control the children we just control the environment that's what we do and once we set up that space the environment that's then children are have the freedom and or uh, to and we are or uh, we look at ourselves as you know, maybe have we have a certain influence with children but we don't look at ourselves as teachers who need to teach something we i think on the other hand i learn a lot from children and uh, uh i have a transformative journey observing children so uh yeah we just accept uh, everything <laughs>